knew I had a problem with chocolate when I started buying it off the streets. That's when you're really in trouble. I mean, they mix it with everything, all sorts, and I ain't talking licorice all sorts. I heard at one time it was cut with gravy browning. I mean, no wonder people get ill. The worst thing for me is having to be on supervised drinking chocolate. It's very humiliating. All day, all the customers are looking at me like I'm scum. I wouldn't mind, but some of the staff aren't understanding either. I'm sure they're meant to provide a screen or something to hide behind, but there's nothing. I'd heard of a trial that was running in London where everybody was given as much Belgian chocolate as they needed. Absolute pure stuff it was. There wasn't any chocolate related crime at all. It's controversial, but I suppose it's a cost more than anything. Where I live, you can get foil. It keeps the chocolate fresh for ages. It's very safe and it doesn't make a mess. Disassociated foil with chocolate. I went to see a mate to do the grain off run. When they wrapped him in the foil, it made me sweat more than he was. One of the worst things about street chocolate, and one of the weirdest things is, you can go from getting pure crap with hardly any chocolate or cocoa solids, right up to like 70% pure cocoa solids. That stuff will tip you over the edge in no time at all. You've got to be really careful and just tie a tiny bit first or it's OD time. And yeah, you can get off the chocolate quite easily by uh, cutting your drinking chocolate down to an egg cup full. Then taking more cheeses for a bit. But they don't let everyone have it. I got knocked back, I, thought, I can't understand why. You've got to be ready, you really got to want to give up. Man had his drinking chocolate cut down a bit fast. He ended up in a right state. It was that bad he was even using value cooking chocolate on top. Value cooking chocolate for God's sake. I've heard it can be a lot harder to give up mints and chocolate. It's worse for the old people who've been sucking them all their lives. They don't even realise they've got a problem until somebody takes them away. I wouldn't mind, but in the old days, they were giving them out like smarties. People get really blasé and start experimenting. Or they just have whatever they can get their hands on. I've heard of a gang who mix chocolate and mints together. The After Eight crew, we call them. My granddad sometimes to sell these mints to top of his pension. People are getting them on the internet these days, it's really crazy. You can get 2,000 followers, no problem. I think one of the scariest things is old Ian. I was with someone who had six cream eggs one after another. Panicked, but in the end I rang an ambulance. I thought I'd be in trouble, but it was alright. Old Ian can happen quite easy, especially at Easter when you've given up the chocolate for Lent. There's a lot of people who never normally touch chocolate. Now they're sniffing chocolate powder. I mean, they seem to live their lives okay and just say they do it at a weekend. But well, since when did a weekend start on a Wednesday? It took me a year to get off the chocolate, but it took me three years to get off the mints. And it was a lot harder. No one seems to understand that. I'm starting to feel everything's going all right. But saying that, is it possible to get addicted to crisps? Does anybody know? There's a lot of help out there. But you've got to stick with it and do as much as you can to help yourself. You've got to be selfish and leave the old faces behind sometimes. They're not worth it. Make new friends if possible. And if you get off it, stay off it. Don't kid yourself that a couple of chocolate buttons won't do any harm, because it will. <laughs> <laughs>